Welcome everybody to part 2 of this kind of interface setup tutorial. Um, picking up exactly where we left off, uh, we've just set up our basic interactable interface in C++ and we can see that in code. So that's where we're at. Actually still out. So next up what we're going to do is create the next class we'll need. Now yeah, interfaces don't actually show up in here but it is there. So the next thing we're going to do is just create a base uh, interactable base. Let's do that. This is going to be our base class that we'll then extend blueprint classes from. So this is a pretty standard setup. Let's wait for that to load. So here's all our nicely generated automatic stuff. We don't have to retype a bunch of it because extending from actor is actually what we want. Uh, what we will do though is come up here and include our interactable interface and then extend off it as well. Now it's worth noting here that you extend off the I interactable interface, not the U interactable interface, because this is where we'll declare the functions that we actually want to use in that. Um, so we've included it in the header, and now we're implementing the interface uh, using multiple inheritance. So just as a really quick setup, let's just get like a simple variable up. So I'm going to make a interact range. Um, let's make that a float. float. So this is just going to be a variable, and like normal, we're just going to set up edit anywhere, blueprint, read, write, and give it a category. And that's pretty much all we need for that. This is, you know, you'll see this covered in a bunch of other tutorials, but this is just a really simple setup to actually get a variable um, set up, and just because we should interact uh, range that's what I called it just hasn't been compiled I think let's just give that a default value of maybe about 200 just so that it can never accidentally instantiate this class without having a value for that. So if we hit build, yes, we want to stop debugging. And all we've done there is made it implement the interface in code and given it a variable, so shouldn't be anything wrong with that. Yep. And just to kind of show with this interact range, if we actually fire up the editor, since we've kind of tagged it with our blueprint read write, edit anywhere kind of stuff, we should be able to set that in the blueprint itself. So the communication between C++ and blueprint is something that I really like and something I try and make a lot of use of. If we open this up. Actually, now let's just keep it in this blueprints folder. We'll make a new class called... Uh, interactable thing test something uh, should have thought of a better name but so this is just going to be a basic class of ours that actually extends our interactable base class so that's the general way you set this up the C++ will be the base class and then you'll extend that with a blueprint class so if we now go show inherited variables, we should find under our category interactable, we've got m interact range. Now, we did say we could edit it, which we can, on account of you can get and set it. To set a default, you do actually just have to open up the class defaults panel. So we can set that by default to 500. And even though it's using the constructor in the C++, if we actually print this, What do we set that to? 500, and by default it's 200. If we drag one of these into the level, that will print 500, not 200. So these defaults are overriding 
the basic constructor for the parent, which is exactly what we want. So that's a really simple uh, object setup, which implements that interface. Now, that's not that much, so we'll quickly, just as part of this video, add in a function. Uh, no, we will cut it there and do that in another video.